Good morning, everyone. I'm your host for today, Catherine Farrell, filling in for Olivia Cohen. And we're coming to you live from the Durfner Dudaica Museum here at the Hebrew Home. And this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. Today is Friday, August 28th, and the time is 1030. We have a great show planned for you today, so let's get started with the weather for today and this weekend. Today will be a high of 88 and partly cloudy throughout the day. Saturday, thunderstorms with a high of 79. And Sunday, mostly sunny with a high of 78. Definitely the better day of this weekend, so go ahead and get out there, enjoy some fresh air, enjoy the view, uh, and really just enjoy these last few days of summer. Let's move into this day in history for August 28th. In 1938, the first degree given to a ventriloquist dummy is awarded to Charlie McCarthy, Edgar Bergen's wooden partner. The honorary degree, Master of Innuendo and Snappy Comeback, is presented on radio by Ralph Dennis, the Dean of the School of Speech at Northwestern University. Uh, and this is a big one. In 1963, one of the largest demonstrations in the history of the U.S., the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, takes place and reaches its climax at the base of the Lincoln Memorial, where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivers his I Have a Dream speech. We'll hear more about that later, uh, later in the show. And in 2005, Hurricane Katrina reaches a Category 5 strength and Louisiana opens the Superdome as a refuge of last resort in New Orleans. Today is National Red Wine Day and National Bowtie Day. And our celebrity birthday for today is Jack Black. So, Thomas Jacob Jack Black. Born August 28, 1969, is an American actor, comedian, singer, songwriter, and YouTube personality. He is known for his roles in films such as High Fidelity, Shallow Hal, School of Rock, King Kong, Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny, The Holiday, the Kung Fu Panda franchise, Tropic Thunder, Gulliver's Travels, Bernie, Goosebumps, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and its sequel, Jumanji, The Next Level. Uh, and what they missed there in that list was Nacho Libre, which is one of my favorites. Um, for his work in School of Rock and Bernie, he gained Golden Globe nominations. He was inducted into Hollywood's Walk of Fame in 2018. Outside of acting, Black is the lead vocalist of the Grammy Award-winning comedic rock duo Tenacious D which he formed in 1994 with Kyle, Kyle Gass. They have released the albums Tenacious D, The Pick of Destiny, Rise of the Phoenix, and Post Apocalypto. In December 2018, Black launched his YouTube channel, Jablinski Games. Happy birthday, Jack Black. So closer to home, there are no resident birthdays for today, but tomorrow, August 29th, we have Vivian W. Happy birthday. And we have several staff birthdays today and this weekend. So today, August 28th, we have Daryl A. in Food Services, Anna S. in Clinical Nutrition. Hi, Anna. Happy birthday. Peter S. in my department, Therapeutic Arts and Enrichment Programs. Happy birthday, Peter. Uh, and then that's it for today. So tomorrow, staff birthdays include Anne Marie B. from Nursing, Philip N. from the Riverwalk Food Services Department, Mildred R. in research, and Dan Reingold, president and CEO. Happy birthday, Dan. Sunday, August 30th, Rose C. in nursing, and Stephanie L. in research. Happy birthday to everyone here at the Hebrew Home and anyone else watching in YouTube land. So let's see what the kitchen is cooking up for us today. <laughs> I have to be honest, when I was reading these menus, I started to get very hungry. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, the lunch today is cheddar potato pierogies served with mushroom cream sauce, stewed tomatoes, and for dessert, mini vanilla cookies. For dinner, potato borscht soup. The entree is honey glazed chicken with seasoned potato wedges. And for dessert, marble pound cake. It gets better on the weekend too. Saturday lunch, beef stew with rice pilaf, peach mango applesauce, and then for dinner, vegetable quinoa soup, and the entree is Waldorf, Waldorf tuna salad platter, homemade potato salad, and then for dessert, rice pudding. I am a rice pudding fiend. I just love it so much. I could eat 
a gallon of it probably. Sunday lunch. <laughs> so again, I'm an Italian fiend for food, meatballs with marinara sauce, spaghetti, broccoli florets, and for dessert, brownie. For dinner is a black bean soup, garden vegetable quiche with sliced carrots, and then for dessert, fig cookie. Oh my gosh, such exciting food coming up for you guys. On to our positive news story for today. Uh, the title is Teachers Make Social Distancing Fun for First Grade Kids by Turning Desks into Cars. So do you remember your first day at school? For most of us, it was so exciting to meet a teacher for the first time. It was great fun to have new classmates and a real desk to sit at. For children this year, things are a little different. It'll still feel thrilling to be in a new environment, to wear a special uniform, but it might also be a little scary to be sitting at a desk surrounded by strange plastic screens uh, as a six-year-old. Two Florida teachers have figured out a way to make those plastic dividers installed on desks to protect children during the age of COVID-19 a little less nerve-wracking and more totally and joyfully brilliant. So first grade teachers Patricia Dovey and Kim Martin of St. Barnabas Episcopal School in DeLand, Florida have turned coronavirus dividers into the windshields and windows of Jeeps. Anything that we can do to add some silliness and some creativity to get them excited is going to be really important in the longevity of this school year, Dovey told Insider. The school supplied the plexiglass. Dovey and Martin paid for the decorations out of their own pockets. Martin estimates that the desks took about a week to complete, and family and friends of these two inspiring teachers helped turn the desks into colorful Jeeps with personalized license plates. So each student arrived yesterday to find their very own car waiting for them. It's going to be more fun to say, hey, purple Jeep, you're getting out of your lane, Martin joked. I think it will be a smart way to keep the kids engaged. We have no doubt about that. So wow, that is so creative. I can actually really relate to this as my oldest son, Christopher. He's gonna be starting first grade in September and he's gonna to have to get used to the plexiglass, the social distancing, mask wearing, and all of the other measures that are in place really to keep everyone safe. Um, so, so bravo there in Florida. So before we move on to our last segment for today, just a few reminders. Uh, remember to tune in to Channel 8. Later, we have Catholic Services at 11.15, Your Hit Parade with Larry at 1.30, and then Shabbat Shalom at 3 o'clock. Our Broadway matinee today will be A Midsummer Night's Dream, streaming on Channel 8 at 2, uh, excuse me, Channel 88 at 2 p.m. And don't forget, you can catch this episode of Good Morning Hebrew Home on Channel 88 at 6.30 or on YouTube. So for our last segment today, and since it's the anniversary of the March on Washington, I thought I might show a clip of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s very inspiring I Have a Dream speech. But first, here are 10 fascinating facts about the march and the events that led to the speech. One, the official event was called the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. On June 11, 1963, President John F. Kennedy made a nationally televised address calling for a drive for more civil rights. That same night, NAACP leader Medgar Evers was murdered in Mississippi. Two, marches had been proposed before the Kennedy speech and Evers' killing, but the events forced the issue. Kennedy met with civil rights leaders such as Dr. King, Roy Wilkins, Whitney Young, and student leader John Lewis about a proposed march. Kennedy signaled his approval publicly in July when he was assured it would be a peaceful event. Three, the march was not universally supported by activists. Prominent objectors included Malcolm X and Strom Thurmond. The organizers didn't agree on all the issues either, but they did agree that blacks and whites should march together at the event. It also wasn't the first threatened march on Washington by civil rights leaders. In 1941, organizers were planning a march to demand desegregation in the U.S. military as World War II approached. But President Franklin Roosevelt averted the march by signing the Executive Order 8802 in June 1941, 
banning discrimination in the federal government and defense industries. Five, almost no one could clearly hear Dr. King's speech. An expensive sound system was installed for the event, but it was sabotaged right before it. Attorney General Robert Kennedy enlisted the Army Corps of Engineers to fix the system. Six, William Edward Burghardt, W.E.B. Dubois, the co-founder of the NAACP, died on the day before the event at the age of 95 in Ghana. Roy Wilkins asked the marchers to honor Dubois with a moment of silence. Seven, of the estimated 250,000 people who attended the march, about 60,000 were white. People came from all over the country and few arrests were reported. Eight, there were 10 speakers on the official program for the public event at the Lincoln Memorial. All of them were men. Rabbi Joachim Prince spoke right before Dr. King. There were no speakers after Dr. King as organizers led the audience in a pledge and gave a benediction. Nine, Dr. King almost didn't give the I Have a Dream part of the I Have a Dream speech. Singer Mahalia Jackson urged Dr. King to tell the audience about the dream, and Dr. King went into an improv improvised section of the speech. 10. The person who wound up with the typewritten speech given by Dr. King is retired college basketball coach George Ravling. A college basketball player at Villanova, organizers saw Ravling in the crowd and asked him to be a bodyguard on stage. He stood next to Dr. King on stage and decided to ask him for the paper copy of the speech. Dr. King obliged and Raveling has the speech locked away in a safe place with no intention of selling it. So we're going to head over to the viewing space for a clip of the speech. This version is about seven minutes long, but the entire speech was actually about 16 to 17 minutes long. And once again, this has been Katherine Farrell filling in for Olivia Cohen. This is Good Morning Hebrew Home. Have a wonderful day and weekend, everyone. I hope you enjoy the speech. Oh, sound. to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration of freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. One hundred years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material problems. This nation will rise up live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yeah. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners 
will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, down in Alabama, with its vicious racists, with its governor, having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. Yes. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is a faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day, this will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. Not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spirit. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last.